and we'll record chapter 10. And we've got three problems that I saw were requested when I checked the discussion boards. Problem number 10, problem number 16, and problem number 30. So somebody do me a favor and read problem number 10. Okay, so we've got three questions. We need to know how long it takes him to get it up to this speed, how many revolutions that's going to be uh, in that speed, uh, in that time. Uh, and we also want to know how long it's going to take him to slow it back down and stop it once it has reached that speed. It also tells us to consider the um, merry-go-round problem uh, from the textbook. So the idea behind that is to have you go back and look at that problem that they've worked out in detail, and that will give you details about how to solve these kinds of problems. So it's good to look at that problem in detail. So that's where a lot of these um, extra numbers have come from. They also give you, you solve for alpha, the angular acceleration, 4.44 rad per second squared. What does that rad stand for? Radians. Radians, which is the unit of distance for SI units uh, when you're talking about angular motion. So, right, it's kind of the equivalent of the meters in linear motion. The other information that we have, they actually tell us in solving uh, the example in the book was 84.38 kilograms times meters squared. That's what I is equal to. What is I? Inertia. inertia moment of inertia. <laughs> and what is that like? in terms of um, if it were a linear quantity, what's the linear equivalent? It's mass. Yeah. You're on point today. <laughs> and Yeah? Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. OK. So the first thing we have to do, we have to find the uh, change in time. How long does it take to spin this thing up to this final velocity? So I know some things. I know the initial velocity. What's the initial velocity of this merry-go-round thing? Uh, it's okay. What's the initial velocity? Initial angular velocity. How fast is this thing going? Zero. Have you ever have you ever done one of these things before? This spinny thing in the park? Yeah. So you what the. Stop doing that. Stop disappearing. Did it come back? OK. I just have to write fast, apparently. So um, it's initially stopped when you get on it. And then you start running around to make it spin faster. So you got up to an omega final. Stupid thing keeps disappearing. We might have to switch to the whiteboard. <laughs> omega final becomes 1.5 radians per second. We are asked to find what's the change in time. What other relevant quantities do I know? So I'm talking about velocities here. This is going all the way back to like chapter 2 and chapter 3. What were the other things that go into this little chart that we'd make? We made lots of these charts where we'd add change in position, V initial, V final, acceleration, and change in time. So you can use that same approach, that same problem solving strategy here. We could have a change in theta. That's the equivalent of our change in um, x. And we have an alpha. Alpha is the equivalent of our acceleration. Do we know what alpha is? Yes. Yeah, what's alpha? 
4.44. How do we know that? It's given. It's given not in the problem statement in the, in the actual back of the book, but the problem statement says to go back and look at this problem that we solved in the chapter. So if you got, go back to that problem that they solved in the chapter, that's where the alpha came from. Okay. So now I have all these variables. I want to know change in time. What equation should I use? Now we're going back to the kinematic equations. We all memorize those, so we can all just scream them off uh, up off the top of our heads. We've got omega final, omega initial, plus alpha times change in time. I can solve this for change in time, get change in time by itself. So I do some algebra. Omega final minus omega initial over alpha gives me my change in time. And I can plug in all my numbers. Omega final is 1.5 minus omega initial is 0 all divided by the change in time, 4.44. That'll give me my change in time. You plug and chug all these numbers in around 0.34 seconds. So that's how we would do part A. Any questions on part A? Okay. What other very what other thing or piece of information are we missing in that little chart that we made? We didn't know the angle, right? So that's what part B asks us to find. What's the angle? So we have to find change in theta. We have two different equations we could use. We could use change in theta equals omega naught times change in t plus one half alpha times change in t squared. That's one of the kinematic equations. We could also use omega final squared equals omega initial squared plus 2 times alpha times change in theta. Which one would you use? First one or the second one? Second one? Why would you use the second one? Why not the first one? Which one's going to be easier to use? First one. Which one does the book solutions use? They use the second one. They make it. They make it like more difficult. Right? This one just spits out theta. Right? So we don't have to do any algebra any shuffling. Both of them are equally valid. You can use either of them. Okay. So change in theta. I'm going to use the first one, just because it's easier. Omega initial. What was that? Zero. Zero. So we don't care about that first part. It goes away. Plus one half times alpha. Alpha was 4.44. Change in time was 0 0.34 squared. Change in theta. Plug in all your numbers, you get 0 0.25. 0 0.25 what? Radians. Important not to call that rads. The, uh, kind of important <laughs> to know that that's radians. What's a rad? Do you know what a rad is? It's an actual unit. Oh. It's it's um, uh, nuclear radiation. So it's how nuked up you are. It's a technical term. Okay. Now part B. What did part B actually ask? Did it ask us for radians? As for revolutions, how do we get a revolution? You anger your citizens enough that they revolt. <laughs> now, how do I get a revolution? Yep. 0 0.25 radians. And I use the conversion factor. Uh, 2 pi radians. That's how many radians are in a circle. Is equal to 1 revolution. Plug those numbers in and you'll find 0 0.04 revolutions. When I was in school, the professor would sometimes make a joke about Prince at this point. I think you're all too young for that. You know the singer Prince? You know he had a band? Purple Rain, yeah. You know his band? 
Prince of the Revolution. Yeah. Your history lesson. Look at that, I cover physics and I cover history. Music history. So it's like fine arts and history combined in one. Any of your fine arts teachers talk about physics? No. How about your history teachers talk about physics? No, that's why I'm better than all of them. <laughs> all right, let's look at part C. So part C, what does part C ask us to find? Remind me. I forgot, I have no memory. I'm old. How long would it take to stop it if I'm applying a certain force to actually stop this thing? Okay, so I've got I've to solve some things. Um, first, if I'm stopping this now, I no longer know the acceleration. I no longer know how fast it's going to slow down. I can use the same equation I used before. I can use change in time is omega final minus omega initial over alpha. Yeah, because I'm trying to slow this thing down. But I no longer have the same alpha. I need to find what is this new alpha. Because I'm applying a new force to slow this down. So what, how can I find alpha? Or how can I find the acceleration? This is a good chapter because it's a review of everything we've learned all semester. Use the first kinematic equation. Can I use the first kinematic equation? What's the first kinematic equation? WF Yeah So I could solve that for alpha but do I know change in t I don't know change in t Ah G will occur Wow He's the oldest one in the class now no, so I can't, I can't do that, right? I need a second equation. There's two variables I don't know in there. The last one, the last one. Can you use the last equation? Let's see. Omega final squared equals omega initial squared plus two times alpha times change in theta. Do I know the change in theta? Do I know how much this is gonna rotate when I'm stopping it? I know how much it rotates getting it spun up to speed but then slowing it back down, I don't know that. What other pieces of information did they give us in part C? They gave us more stuff. They gave us a force. What did they tell us for the force? 300 newtons. At a radius of what? 1.35 meters. Okay. I have a force and I have a radius. What does that help me get? I have a force at a place where I'm applying that force, that's gonna be my torque. So I can find torque. Turn back on. Torque equals, what is torque equal to? Force times lever arm. Oh, so the torque is equal to 300 times 1.35. The torque is somebody multiply that for me. I actually didn't write that out, so I need somebody to actually do it. 300 times 1.35. 405. 405. 405 what? What are the units of torque? Newtons times meter. Force times radius, Newton times a meter. Okay, how does that help me? I just found the torque, but I want the acceleration. How can I find the acceleration from torque? How are those related to each other? I'm gonna give you a clue. In linear equations, we use F equals MA. Yeah? Torque is the same thing as, it's a basically a rotational force. So in rotational terms, the force is equal to torque. In rotational terms, the acceleration is alpha, so there's alpha. In rotational terms, what is the mass? Inertia. Inertia. So I can find alpha 
is equal to the torque over the moment of inertia. So alpha is going to be 405 divided by the moment of inertia of 84.38. Alpha is 4.8. What are the units on alpha? Radians per second squared. Good. Good, good, good. Now I can go back to my original equation. Change in T equals omega final minus omega initial over alpha. Change of T. Omega final. What's my final velocity? It's what? Zero. What's my initial velocity? 1.5. Divided by alpha. What's my alpha? 4.8. Oh, where did that negative come from? Why did I throw in a negative? Because I'm slowing, slowing down. So change in T, when you do that division, you should get around 0.31 seconds. Okay. That's how you do problem number 10. Hopefully that answered all your questions. I think a couple of people asked about that. Any questions? Any questions? All right, let's look at problem number 16. They had fun with problem 16. <laughs> Somebody read problem 16 for me. You know, come out. Or turn the book around so that I can see it and I'll read it. Okay, this is everything they gave us. This guy is going to try to slow down her. Zorch. I don't know, is that, anybody read Superman or know Superman? Is that a real Superman villain? If it is, they should pay DC. He's like home He is? Okay. What do I do? Sure. First, I should identify what that first number actually is. What kind of physical quantity is one revolution per 28 hours? The change in position over a change in time. What does that give you? Radians per second. Trying to get it to radians per second. So what is a radian per second measuring? That's, that's velocity. So this is some omega final. That's how fast I wanted to get it spinning. And we can infer an, an omega initial. We can figure out what omega initial is. One rev per 24 hours. How do we know that? Common knowledge. That's how fast the Earth spins. Yeah? And we want to convert these into our SI units. And SI units are radians per second. How do I get revolutions per hours into radians per second? Well, let's convert the revolution first. One revolution. How many radians? Two pi radians. Two pi rads. One prints over two pi rads. And then I need to convert my hours in seconds. How do I do that? One hour up top. How many seconds in an hour? 3,600. Unless you're in physics, then it feels like longer. <laughs> Multiply all this out, you'll get 7.3 times 10 to the negative 5 radians per second. 
And we'll do the same thing with the Omega Initial. <laughs> Two pi radians in one revolution. One hour, 3,600 seconds. And we got 6.2 times 10 to the negative 5 radians per second. I'm asked to find how long is it going to take this Zorch guy to slow down the Earth uh, from this initial to this uh, final. How do I do that? Well, it's the same thing we did last problem. We need to find change in time. Change in time was the final minus the initial divided by the acceleration. Yeah? Do I know the final velocity? Yeah? Do I know the initial velocity? Yeah? Do I know the acceleration? No, I need to find the acceleration. So I need to find the acceleration that's associated with this force. How did we do that? How do I find angular acceleration from some force? This is a linear force and an angular acceleration. What do I need to do? I can't use the linear force to angular acceleration. I need to use the angular force. What was the angular force? Angular equivalent to force. Torque. Torque. Equals I times alpha. Yep, so that's Newton's second law again, except just angular terms. Torque is angular force. Moment of inertia is angular mass. Alpha is angular acceleration. So I can find the angular acceleration if I know the torque over the moment of inertia. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can find these two things. The torque. Torque is equal to radius times the force. What's the radius? Where is this guy going to be applying this force to stop the thing rotating, to stop Earth from rotating? Is it going to fly into the Earth on the outside? So how far am I from the middle of the Earth if I'm on the outside of the Earth? This is where this one gets tricky. Here's the Earth. Here I am standing on the surface. That's where I'm applying my force. What's that distance? How would I get that? Half the diameter, or the radius, <laughs> the radius of the Earth. Yeah. What does it make sense that that's the radius of the Earth? Yeah. yeah. So how do I get the radius of the Earth? I go to Google. I look that up in a table. You are not supposed to know the radius of the Earth off the top of your head. 3,959 miles. Okay, do we want it in miles? Probably not. We would want it in meters. So if we convert it into the meters, 6.376 times 10 to the 6. Yep. So that R, the lever arm, is the radius of the Earth. Times the force that I can apply. What force can this guy apply? 4 times 10 to the 7 newtons multiply that out, you should get a torque of about 2.55 times 10 to the 14 newtons times meters. So I have my torque. Now I need to get my moment of inertia. Moment of inertia. They give you one equation for moment of inertia in, in your textbook. They actually take it pretty easy on you for moment of inertia. Moment of inertia of some object, of a sphere, is two-fifths times m times r squared. So that's the moment of inertia. Yeah. So if we're trying to slow it, do we not have to do negative like we did with the merry-go-round for the Newtons or the force or whatever? So that would... Um, so the negative not apply to this problem? The, 
Let, let me look ahead. Yeah, neg negative, negative won't apply here. So now we have moment of inertia, two-fifths m times r squared. What mass do I plug in? Mass of the Earth. We all know this off the top of our heads, too? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Two-fifths times 5.979 times 10 to the 24. I have a PhD of physics in astronomy. Of course I know the mass of the Earth. Times 6.376 times 10 to the 6 squared. Plug all those numbers in. You got a moment of inertia of about 9.72 times 10 to the 37. What are the units on that? Kg times meter squared. Okay. I'm taking a mass, which is kilograms, multiplying by it a radius squared. Radius is meters, meters squared. Here's my moment of inertia. So now I can find my alpha is my torque over my I. So it's 2.55 times 10 to the 14 divided by 9.72 times 10 to the 37. That is the acceleration that I can apply given that force. So it's 2.62 times 10 to the negative 24 radians per second squared. Is that a very high acceleration? That is 23 zeros followed by this number. Point zero, 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 zero. So that's not a very high acceleration. So this is why Superman doesn't really care about this. It's going to take this guy a long time. Let's calculate how long. Change in time is a change in omegas divided by alpha. So change in time. 7.3 times 10 to the negative 5 minus 6.2 times 10 to the negative 5 divided by 2.62 times 10 to the negative 24 plug in all those numbers and you get a change in time of about 4.2 times 10 to the 18 second is that a lot of seconds? That's a lot of seconds. I have no concept for how many seconds that is. Let's convert it into the years. Maybe years will be a little more clear. Like is that, is that like 10 years, 20 years, 100 years? I don't know. So we can look up a conversion factor. One year is 3.15 times 10 to the 7 seconds. Convert this, and you find your change in time is equal to 1.3 times 10 to the 11 years. So do we really have to worry about this happening anytime soon? No? This is a little different than the answer that the book gives. The book solves it a little bit different way. They don't round it at the same place as I do. Uh, this is still close enough. 1.3 times 10 to the 11 years. It takes a long time. Yeah. How many years do we have left on Earth? 12 years. We're not going to make it that long. Okay? It's your daily reminder that the Earth is being destroyed. Uh, all right, let's do number 30 last. Number 30. Somebody read problem number 30.
Ooh. Okay, this is all the information they gave us. They gave us a lot of information. We have these weights. We're lifting these weights. The mass of the weight is two kilograms, and the uh, distance that the weight is from the pivot point is 0.24 meters. So they tell us that. They tell us we're moving our arm uh, by 60 degrees. They tell us the moment of inertia of my arm is 0.25, and they tell us that the force that I'm applying is 750 at an effective lever arm of 0.02. And I'm asked to find what's the angular acceleration. What is alpha? In all the previous problems, we've kind of come to this equation that we've derived. Alpha equals the torque over the moment of inertia. We've used this three times now. What's the equation for torque? F times R, and then we have the moment of inertia. So I know the force. They told us the force was 750. Right, 750. And I know that force is applied at 0 0.02 meters. So, so I have the torque. I have both of those. Now I need the moment of inertia. The moment of inertia is actually two different parts. This is the trickiest part of this problem, I think. You have the moment of inertia of the arm. Right? But is this person just doing bicep curls with just their arm? No, they want to get jacked. What are they doing? They're lifting weights. How big is the weight? Two kilograms, and that weight has a certain um, uh, lever arm too. So we have to add on the moment of inertia of the weight, I of the weight. So the total moment of inertia is the moment of inertia of the arm. And they gave us a value for that. They didn't give us a, mo a value for the moment of inertia of the arm, uh, of, of the weight, rather. So we need the mass of the weight times the radius of the weight squared. That is how you calculate the moment of inertia of an object, mr squared. They don't tell you the shape of the object. mr squared is its moment of inertia. Mass times its radius squared. So I can figure out this moment of inertia, I is equal to I arm, 0 0.25, plus the mass of the weight of two kilograms, times the radius of the weight, 0 0.24 squared. Plug and chug those numbers into your calculator. You should get 0 0.365 kilograms times meters squared. So then for alpha, we get 750 times 0 0.02. That's the force times the radius. Divide by the moment of inertia, 0 0.365. And I have my new alpha, 41.1 radians per second squared. Now, what does part B want? Part B wants to know how much work you're actually doing to get this um, thing lifted. So we know from linear physics, work is force times change in position. This, if it, uh, this is uh, for a line. So that would kind of work if I'm taking the weight and I'm just lifting it up and down. Well, I'm not doing that, I'm rotating, right? So I need to take into account the rotational motion. So the work for rotation is going to be the angular equivalent of force. What is that? Torque. Torque. Times the angular equivalent of change of position. What is that? Change in, change in theta. Work is equal to torque. Torque is force times your lever arm times your change in theta. So work is my force, 750 times my lever arm, 0 
times my change in theta, 1.047. I thought it was 60 degrees. Where did that number come from? Why don't, I, why don't I do 750 times 0 0.02 times 60 degrees? What's the SI unit for angle? Radians. What do we do in part A? We converted 60 degrees into radians. So this is 60 degrees just in radians. So you have to make sure you're in the right units. So we have newtons times meters times radians. So multiply all that out, and you get your work is equal to 15.7. What are the units? What's a newton times a meter? <laughs> it's a newton times meter, but what's a newton times meter? It has another name. Not torque. What are the units of work? Beyonce sings a song about it. If you like it, what do you do? Put a ring on it. What's got to be inside of that ring? Somebody said it. Jules. That one was a stretch, wasn't it? But somebody got it. Just to be careful, we should put in praise Beyonce. <laughs> okay. Have to appease the gods. Really? Any questions? <laughs> no?